Investing News Network. And here today with me is Benj Gallander, president of Contra the Herd Investment Letter. Thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So we're here at PDAC. It's day three of the conference. How are you feeling? How does the mood feel to you so far? Well, I've been coming here for at least 25 years. And I've been here through the good times and the bad. When I first started coming, BreeX was doing really well, and that turned into a complete fraud. And after that, all of a sudden, the people stayed away. And this place tends to flow, of course, with the commodity prices. So being a contrarian, buying when stocks are out of favor, I like it when there's not a lot of people here, because that means there's more things for me to buy. Right now, I'd say things are going pretty well. There's quite a few people. It's not bursting at the seams, but the, the mood right now is fairly positive overall, is what I would say. How do you feel about the resource space in 2018? Will we see continued positivity throughout the year, do you think? That's a, a good question. I'm not, I don't usually go into short term mm. uh, where things are going. When you've got certain commodities at record prices like cobalt and lithium and palladium, that's often a sign that things can continue to go up to some degree, but there may be a bubble that's getting ready to burst. So in terms of timing, that's always very, very difficult. So, you know, gold hasn't been doing much for quite a while now. Silver hasn't been particularly exciting. So, you know, not all the commodities are doing great. Plus, at this point, you have more of a, a challenge from things like cryptocurrencies and marijuana stocks. A lot of times, people move into the mining space because they're looking to have a tremendous return. And now, a lot of them are looking to cryptocurrencies and marijuana, which means there's less money to go into the mining space. So, I'm, I'm reasonably, reasonably positive about it now. At the same time, it's difficult for me to find bargains in the way that we look. Okay, so U.S. and Canadian budgets and their impact on the market right now, can you speak a little bit about that for us? Absolutely. I, I think that the states, they made a huge mistake because effectively they're cutting the taxes for the rich. And if you want an economy to do well, you want to cut the taxes for, or give more money into the hands of people at the bottom because they're the people who are going to buy the washers, the dryers, the televisions, the cars, etc. because they don't have it. In Canada, too, the budget, I mean, the, the economy's moving very well now. Unemployment is very low now, same as in the States. Uh, in Canada, I think it's the lowest rate for about 16 years, in the States, 40 years. So at that point in time, you want to try and get your government budget in order. Neither country is doing that. So in the short run, that can help the economies. But longer term, when things go bad, it's going to really hurt stocks, I think. Mm -hmm. It may help gold, because people may move to that as a, a haven for safety, uh, which I don't really think that it is, but a lot of people do. So I think there's a, a, a falseness of play right now via the governments, and that will hurt us more later on. Okay, I'm going to have you back up a little bit. You've mentioned being a contrarian investor. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what that means for people who may not know about it? Yeah, so we buy into companies that have been badly beaten up. I'm only buying into companies that have been around for at least 10 years, uh, companies that have at least 100% plus upside, often 2, 3, 400%. Companies, when I say that percentage on the upside, they have all traded at the level where I'm looking to target them at before. I mean, our returns are amongst the best out there uh, for the past 15 years annualized, better than 16%, the past five years, better than 22%. We've been doing this for almost 25 years. I've been investing for about 40. So we look at things that people don't like and hope we'll get really good returns. So we look at things like financial ratios, we look at mm -hmm. management in the commodity sector, we'll look at commodity prices, but we like what other people generally don't. We hope that they'll hop on board, push up the stock price, and when the party is in elation, we like to get out. Those are some very specific criteria, I think. Can you speak about any stocks that you like currently? Yeah, in the commodity space, we own a Lasser at this point in time. Um, I own a stock like Agon, which is a huge insurance company in the States. 
there's uh, GMP, they raise money in the commodity space, also the marijuana space, also uh, cyber currency space right now, I think GMP I like a lot, Porter Hill, which is in the internet of things, and they seem to be turning around. Both of those two companies also are paying a dividend right now, which is nice, because if I'm getting a dividend, that allows me to be stupid longer. So if the companies don't do well, or if they, if they go down, at least if I'm getting a dividend, I'm getting some sort of a payback at that point in time. So dividends are big for me, um, and I like companies that actually do have revenues. Okay, and those, those are companies that are across diverse industries, so obviously you're not only looking at the resource space. What industry do you see the most opportunity in going forward, because resources? That's it's a great question. Um, oil and gas mm -hmm. is, has come back to some degree, but I still think there's a lot of opportunity there. The shipping industry, of which I don't own any right now, although we do have Diana Shipping in one of the portfolios, they're really beaten up. Uh, the drilling space specifically, those companies are really beaten up. I own Cathedral Energy in that one. In the vice president's portfolio, I manage the presidents. They also own uh, Trinidad. So. Uh, drilling is a sector that's just so badly beaten up and uh, after this maybe we'll talk next at an oil show and there's many companies there that have a long way to go. Okay, final question and I'll let you go. What advice would you leave investors with heading into the rest of the year? Well, I, I think one of the best ways to get a sure return is to pay off your debt or pay down your debt. And I know we're talking investing, that's a way to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to deleverage your personal risk profile, by paying down your debt, it's like a guaranteed return. So before one should invest in cyber currencies and marijuana and go crazy there, often paying down debt makes a lot of sense. A lot of people though, they want to look for that big, big return and they want to leverage and go crazy. Often that leads to people crying into their suit. Okay, thank you so much for coming to talk today. It's great A to pleasure, have you. Charlotte. It's uh, great to be with you. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Benj Gallander.